Hello everyone, how are you? Uh, good. Right, so what I'm going to talk about today is um, adding extensions to uh, arpeggios. So I'm going to give you some exercises to, uh, to actually work on that. Um, and this will, this will just make, um, make things a lot more interesting for you. So first of all, we've got a bit of revision to do. Uh, I'm using a three note per string uh, C major scale. So we're going to go C, D, E, F, G, A, B. That's the first octave. It's called an octave because it's got eight notes in it. So, and then it, obviously it carries on. So, um, so, uh, so like uh, constructing any chord. Uh, well, a chord is really just like um, when you play two notes together. So, um, I mean, like sort of power chords. I mean, that's like or that kind of thing. Um, but co the convention is to take um, what you call the root, which is like the C, the third. So, so E in this case. G. Yeah. So the extensions now. Um, well, I mean, I, I, I'll give you another quick example. I mean, I'm not expecting to play this one straight away, but this is a good example that I use. Um, I use. I use this to warm up because, like. If you go up in a chord, if, if you go up a scale using that pattern, note every note has its own chord um, which fits that scale so well what do we do if we're only playing three notes out of um, seven well what are we doing with the other four notes well that's um that's what the extensions are uh, so the convention is like to go on the odd numbers um, so one three five then the next one should be a seven And so on, but um, maybe I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself on, on this because because um, if you're going like now that's also the same as this, but with a different um, a different root. So what so what what that means is that like you can play any chord and like put a different root to it, and it changes the name of that chord. Um, so anyway, so um. So referring back to those um, those basic arpeggios I gave you in the last exercise, if we now actually start here, this would actually be on uh, on D minor. Remember that one. Remember when we were doing that one. So the um, so that would be like a D minor seven. Because it has to be, because you're going. Um, now, because we'll go either one, two, three, four, five, six, or if it's Dorian. So, in either case, the D. the seven so we so um so the first exercise I've got for you is no 
Now, do you watch what my right hand's doing here? You can't do all sweeps on that because it, it becomes um, confusing very quickly. There's, there's two versions of that. There's um, there's the major seven, and then there's the um, what you call the dominant seven. Uh, so we'll start with the um, we'll start with the major seven because that's probably easy. <laughs> So, yeah, because as I was saying, you, you're doing um, you're doing a combination of um, of like economy picking and alternate picking. In order to get that, you've got to do an upstroke. Seven one. See, so collect the major seven. It. So the dominant seven. the dominant seven now for the um, like for the half the minute <laughs> Try and 
get every note. If you need, try and get 100% coverage if you can. Um, use palm muting as well. That will help um, to dampen the strings. But we're aiming for the clarity of the notes. You know, to um, to try and savour the notes as well. And as I was saying last time, the, above all, the main thing is uh, is control. That if you can't um, if you can't play this uh, at different speeds, uh, it's going to get confusing, and you're perhaps going to get ahead of yourself and uh, and things like that. Uh, so those are the sevens. Uh, the next, uh, yeah, because um, the next one would be like I didn't like, which, which would be like the nines. Um, so, um, so if we take those, um, if we take those seven chord. <laughs> And then, and I, but I start on this beat, or rather, I add this beat here. You see how that? That's the major nine. That's a minor nine. Yeah, it's a minor nine. G, so that would be like a like a G set, like a G seven, wouldn't it? G dominant set. before we go we talk about like um, 11s and 13s as well um, because we always go in like in the um, we always go on odd numbers uh, and now I mean the, yeah the, the, the problem there is you know because you get like what's that that's just four chord <laughs> well I think I think the convention is that if you're playing the seven as well as the four it becomes an 11 um, now in rock, ironically, <laughs> going up to 11, um, it tends not to, it tends to be more sort of like a jazz sort of soul type thing really, more than like a rock, but, um, but it can make it more interesting. So, um, so if I start on like F this time, root, third, fifth. That's the fourth. So root, root, third, fifth, seventh, ninth, eleventh. Because I was thinking it's sort of a nice sort of dreamy voice in the elevens. <laughs> Thank you. 
Subtract seven, that's a six, isn't it? So in this case, it's a D. do things like that uh, getting back to that you know that uh, walking on the moon cut yeah you know, walking on the moon cut I mean basically like any chord you can we should be able to turn that into an arpeggio. So that's, uh, yeah, so that should give you, um, Plenty to uh, plenty to be going on with. Uh, in the next one, I'm going to look at sort of multiple octaves, um, like two and three octave arpeggios, and then, and, um, and then that's getting quite advanced. So I don't want to confuse you too much, um, but I hope you like this. So please comment below, and um, I'll see you next time. All right, thanks for watching.